All right, so we've talked at a conceptual level about how MapReduce works and how we might analyze our movie ratings data with it. Let's make it real. Let's look at some actual MapReduce code and dissect how it works. Now, it's not gonna, don't be too scared here. You don't actually have to be a coder to understand this. It's actually pretty straightforward stuff. So let's take a look. So let's turn that example in some actual code here. I just want you to see what it looks like and kind of walk through it really quickly. So here's what an actual MapReduce program looks like that does exactly what we just said, that it counts up the number of movies viewed by each user in the movie lines data set. And you can see it's not a lot of code. It's actually very simple. So MapReduce itself is just a system, an API for you know, writing mappers and reducers. All the hard work gets done by Hadoop under the hood for actually distributing this information and making it all come back together. So the job for you as a programmer is actually relatively simple, thanks to Hadoop. So this is actually written in Python using a package called MRJob for MapReduceJob. And all we do is set up a class in Python, and then we're going to call it Movies by User Counter that inherits from MRJob. Here is our actual mapper function. And you can see the actual meat of the mapping is just basically two lines of code. So we uh, use this line of Python to split up our each input line into a user ID, movie ID, rating, and timestamp limited by tab characters. And our output is our key value pair, where the key is the user ID and the value is the movie ID. So that's exactly what we described in the previous lecture for what our mapper should do. And this is what a real mapper function looks like. Now under the hood, you know, an individual computer might be getting called for each line of the, the input data for some section of that data. This mapper will be called once for each line, each, each piece of data that is distributed however Hadoop determines to distribute it. Then our reducer function, under the hood again, MapReduce is going to consolidate all of the movies viewed by each user, and what gets passed into the reducer is each key. So each user ID will get passed in along with the list of all the movies that the user watched. And our reducer function just counts it all up. So it starts a counter variable called numMovies, and for every movie encountered in this movies list, it will increment that value by one, leaving us with the total number of movies at the end that that user watched. And that is the final output that gets yielded in the end the key being the user ID again, and the output being the number of movies watched. So we can actually run this. Um, we don't actually need a cluster to run something as simple as this. I downloaded the 100,000 rating data set earlier, so we can just run it. Uh, so let's see it in action, just so you can see this is for real. Python, and we'll run the movies by user.py script, and for its input, I'm going to point it at the input data for the 100k data set. Off it goes, and it's already done. Even on one system, that's uh, that's pretty quick. If we scroll up, we can see the actual output here. So, for example, uh, user ID 933 watched 184 movies. User ID 937 rated 40 movies. User 941 watched 22, and you can see the final results are actually sorted alphabetically by user ID. And most people were were pretty pretty active in rating here. Some of them were really active, some of them more than others. You know, here's one that only watched, uh, rated 29 movies, but if we scroll up, here's some very dedicated person who actually rated 685 movies on the Movie Lens website. So there's a real MapReduce job in action and some real MapReduce code. So I just want you to have a look at it, get some familiarity with what MapReduce looks like, and hopefully it seems a little bit less intimidating to you now. You can see that this is actually very simple code even though it's doing a very complex distributed operation under the hood, the actual mechanics of writing mappers and reducers are often very, very simple and very compact. So that wasn't so bad, was it? I mean, even if you're not a programmer or a coder or you don't consider yourself to be one, I think that was pretty simple stuff. So hopefully it's uh, sort of exposed you to how simple MapReduce programming can be. Let's move on.